Hello, everybody, and welcome back. Welcome back. We're looking at question five on our grade seven Gauss paper from the year 2009. In the diagram, the coordinates of point P could be... All right, so here we've got P, and uh, it's got an X coordinate and a Y coordinate. Okay. And our X coordinate is how far along the X axis we go till we are directly below or above P. And I can see, you know, if we're counting along, we go negative 4, negative 2, 0. So I think the coordinate, the x coordinates for P should be between negative 2 and 0. And we're going to use this to sort of zoom in on our possible answers. So we've got 1, 3, 1, negative 3, negative 3, 1, 3, negative 1, negative 1, 3. These are our possible answers. So what I think we should do is just sort of try and narrow down the x and y coordinates of P. And I'll just draw this picture again here. Two and four, two and four, negative two, negative four, negative two, negative four, and P was about here. Okay. So the x coordinate for P is about here, and the y coordinate is about here on the x and y axes. Okay? So, well, what does this tell us? The x coordinate here sits between negative 2 and 0. So we might ask ourselves, well, which of our possible answers have x, the first coordinate, being between negative 2 and 0? And that will narrow down some possibilities. This y here, I don't know exactly what value it is, but it sits between 2 and 4. So we might ask, well, which, what possibilities do we have presented to us as multiple choice answers that have our y value between 2 and 4? And so if we just write down our possibilities, 1 and 3, 1 and negative 3, negative 3 and 1, 3 and negative 1, and then it's 1, no, negative 1 and 3. Okay. So if we look here, there's only two that have a y value between 2 and 4. But even stronger, there's only one of them that has a y value, or an x value between negative 2 and 0. And that's this negative 1 here. So our answer should be E. Okay. So that's very much a, a uh, sort of constructive way to try and find these guys out. You know, let's let's narrow some things down. Let's uh, figure out what... Uh, actually, no, I would say... I think I misspoke there. That's not a constructive way to do it. That's sort of a deductive way. You know, this is my range, this is my range. Let's find out where things overlap. Uh, a constructive way, actually... Uh, another way I'd like to show you, but I think this is more constructive way, uh, is to actually plot these points on a separate graph and ask, well, which one sort of looks like it's in the same spot as P? So that's another way to do it. Two, four. And so it becomes a question of, are you able to read uh, the, this Cartesian coordinate system very easily? Or are you able to uh, uh, create uh, and, and, and plot points easily. And, you know, there's some overlap there, but you know, it might be better at one than the other. So 1, 3, that, that's over 1 and up 3. That would be where A is. 1, negative 3, that's in the opposite direction. That's down here. We go over by 1 and down here to B. Negative 3 is here, so we go up by 1, and that's where C is. 3 and negative 1, that would be down here, that's D. And negative 1 and 3 would be E. And this is the only one that looks like where P is. So again, that's another way to see where E is. And this is more constructive because we're actually plotting uh, all five points rather than just deducing and saying, well, the X and Y of P have to be in these particular ranges. But either way, we get our answer to question number five. And so we're going to move right along to question number six. I will see you guys in the, ne in the next video for, for the next question.